What's going on guys and welcome to something a little bit different today. Today we're going to be looking at how to start your own Sunday League football team. It's a popular question that we get across the Sunday League football videos so I thought I'd answer back in the form of a video that gives you a little bit of a breakdown as to what you can expect because there's a little bit more than you think. Now when we first started Palmer's FC we thought it'd be a fairly simple thing to set up but unfortunately there's a lot of groundwork that you need to do in the beginning to really bring things together. Now before we dive into it I must stress that the most important thing in everything that you do when starting a Sunday League team is to be organised. If that's not you then it's time to change or give it to someone else who is. In the first season of running Palmer's FC, I was the secretary, I was the treasurer and the manager all rolled into one. And believe me, it was not pretty. I still do two out of three now, which keeps me busy, but do get help. Trust me, it's the only way. So let's start at the top with the secretary. You'll be responsible for liaising with your league, your opponents, your refs on a weekly basis to make sure your games go ahead. And you'll also be responsible for chasing up and paying any fines that your team may incur along the way. Moving on to the treasurer, this person will be handling the money in the team. Unfortunately, it's not the most fun thing to do, but it's extremely important to make sure sure everybody pays their way and the club is stable. Finally, we've got the manager, the gaffer, the special one, whatever he wants to be called, we all know what's involved in here. Usually a player manager when it comes to Sunday League and it's this guy's job to rally around during the week and chase everyone up to make sure they're available for Sunday to be picked in the team. Now once you've got those three positions sorted, the next thing you need to do is get a bunch of players that never made it as professionals. Speak to family, friends, work colleagues or anyone else you can get your hands on. Usually a small core can quickly grow into something a lot bigger. Also if you can grab a couple of players that just missed out when having trials for Crystal Palace but now works for their dad's mate's construction firm, get these guys sorted. These are the ones that are going to usually give you the success when it comes to Sunday League football. When thinking about the the size of the squad it's a bit of a balancing act to be fair if you sign 15 you could be in danger of having a small core go out the night before get completely pissed out their face and not turn up so you're left with eight or nine on a sunday morning but then on the opposite side of things you might sign 20 plus and they all turn up and suddenly your manager's got a bit of a headache trying to rotate everyone to make sure they get a game in the long run everyone gets pissed off leaves end of football so with that in mind try signing 17 and a half so here's where we're at you've managed to get a bunch of players who all want to play football and out of that team you've managed to get yourself a secretary a treasurer and a manager next up you you've got to find a league to enter. Now, if you don't know of any local leagues to enter, you can always contact your local FA who will supply you a list of leagues for you to enter. And if you don't know their details, Google is your friend. Normally, when you enter a league as a new team, you put in the bottom division and made to work your way up. But to be honest, that's all part of the fun. So now you've got your team, you've entered the league, you've now got to get yourself a home ground to play at. Now you can always contact your local council who will be able to supply you a list of playing fields in your area that you can register to, but also try out some private grounds too, such as schools and colleges. Now we're really creating a buzz, we've got ourselves a team, a secretary, a treasurer and a manager, we've got a league that we've entered and a ground to play at as well. The next thing you need to do is pay for all of it. That's right, we're talking dollar dollar bills, y'all. This stuff ain't going to pay for itself, unfortunately. When it comes to running a Sunday league football team, there's lots of different costs all over the place that can really add up, and my best advice is just pay these off as soon as you possibly can. Otherwise, you might fall behind, you'll incur fines, you'll incur loss of points, you might even get suspended from competitions and that's not what you want to be doing. So what I'm going to do is run through a list of things that we have to pay for here at Palmer's FC. Don't take these figures as gospel because they may change depending on where you're at. But it'll give you a better idea of how much you're going to need roughly when starting a team. So first thing you're going to need to do is pay an affiliation fee to your local FA. This basically registers you as a club and gets you going. Next up, you're going to need to pay another affiliation fee. This time it's going to be for your league so you can play for throughout the season. Then when entering that league, you might get the option of entering a couple of cups and of course these cost too. Another thing you're going to need to get is insurance and public liability in case of any injuries and accidents. Remember that pitch is secured? Well, you're going to have to pay for that as well and this is going to be one of your biggest costs. And then you've got the on-game referee fees throughout the season and as the home team, you'll need to be paying for this too. To be honest, I don't know how they do it. They wake up just as early as us to run around in the cold to be abused left, right and centre only to pick up £30 at the end of it. I do feel for them. Anyway, let's say your league has got 11 teams. You're going to be playing 10 home games well, times that by the 30, that means you're going to be paying 300 quid throughout the year, max. When it comes to cup matches, you'll split the fee with the other team regardless of whether you're home or away, but don't actually factor these amounts into your budget because it's impossible to say how far you're going to go in the cup. When it comes to a cup match, just charge the lads on a Sunday morning a couple of quid each to cover the rec fee. When it comes to equipment, you're going to need balls and plenty of them. There's plenty of cheap sites out there that do sets of fives and tens, but believe me, you're going to need to replenish these throughout the season as well because they tend to burst and go missing. You're also going to need to get yourself an FA approved first aid kit and then finally another big outlay your kit again you can pick up cheap kits from various discount websites but don't expect them to be the Nike and Adidas that we all want to be wearing at the end of the day a nice kit isn't going to make you play any better so weigh up whether a nice kit is more important than winning games and of course
course, having fun as well. Oh yeah, and don't forget to grab yourself an away kit. That's pretty much just doubled your cost. When it comes to kits, I'm going to leave that off of the list because there are ways around you getting them for free. If you know someone that runs companies and they're willing to whack their logo on the front, that's sponsorship, you got yourself a kit. You could also go down the other route of holding a fundraising evening, such as a quiz night and a raffle to generate funds if you can't find sponsorship for your kit. The other thing with the kit is they tend to last a good few years, so it's not something that you're actually going to be paying out every single year. So there's no point in putting it in this figure. Talking of the figure, we've got an example of £1,400. This is the amount that you need to pay out to run this team. Now, let's say you've signed 16 players to your team. You want to be dividing your overall amount by the number of players in your team to give you your player registration fee. Now, according to my fantastic mathematical ability, that comes to £87.50. But the best thing to do in this case is just round it up to 90. It will give you a little bit extra over the course of the season if you need to buy a new match ball or something like that. But hey, wham bam, thank you, man. You've got yourself a player registration fee. Now, you might have certain players in your team that can't be there every week due to work or family commitments. So it wouldn't be fair to charge them the full registration fee up front. So what I do is reduce that fee to £30 and then charge them £5 per match that they play. Now this is where your treasurer comes in because they need to be keeping track of what every single player has paid. Especially when it comes to the pay as you play players because if their circumstances change and they start playing even more than they said that they would, then you want to be making sure that they don't actually pay any more than the full registration fee. So in this case, they've already paid £30, so they've got £60 to play with. Divide that by five, you've got 12 matches. If they play any more than 12 matches, they pay no more. It's as simple as that. It's all about making it fair for everyone involved, so make sure they don't pay any more than the fee that you say at the start of the season. Here's the most important tip though, get as much as you possibly can paid at the beginning of the season so you can just concentrate on enjoying your football and hopefully winning games as well. Finally, to make life a little bit easier and secure, look at getting yourself a club bank account so that you don't have to keep handling lots of money each and every week. So that, my friends, is pretty much it. Simple? Of course it is, but you need to be organised and get the right people around you to help you run the team. I really hope that those that are looking to start a Sunday League football team find this video useful. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Of course, I'll get back to you. But in the meantime, drop a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and be sure to check out all the other football content on this channel. I'll see you in the next one. Final substitution is Aaron that's making way for Super Dan in a short sleeve number 10 shirt. Very fetching, and the ref must agree as he goes in for a cheeky little hug there. And it's Super Dan that gets straight involved here as he wins the ball from our opponent, plays it up to Kev. Kev gives it straight back. Hugh Wayne. Yes, Dan! Oh, yes, Wayne! That must have been payback for the other day when Dan was filming him at work.